It's as though you are immediately thrust into a realm that you do not know. It's a sound world that you cannot possibly resonate with as a human, and that's one of the main intentions of the score. The moment that Under the Skin begins, there are these reverberating strings that form a sort of beehive sound force, a locust plague, that transports us into the worlds of the alien. This off-putting plague grows and grows with tremendous menace and weight, and it wraps itself around us, increasingly permeating our minds, just like the main character permeates the human worlds. Michael Levy's score, in conjunction with Johnny Byrne's sound design, is an extremely provocative work and it functions incredibly well, filmically and conceptually, in a plethora of ways. For example, it explores the constructs of gender and sexuality through a science fiction lens. That said, I argue that the film score pushes at the boundaries of what's typically achieved by music and sound design, which, in this case, results in the challenging of our perception of what it means to be human. Specifically, the score strengthens that argument by augmenting both the strangely discombobulating and inexplicably pervasive tone of the film, as well as the uncodifiable nature of Scarlett Johansson's character, from whose point of view we mainly absorb the events of the film. Film music and sound, specifically in the science fiction genre, have always held great responsibility in defining an understanding of specific cinematic worlds. In Star Wars, with its release in 1977, Williams utilized nostalgic musical principles with classical Hollywood tropes to rejuvenate the science fiction genre and elicit a tone of great wonder and marvelment. Later on, film music styles like rock and techno, and even later, further integrations of music with sound design were used more prominently to convey diverse, otherworldly, and futuristic topics and ideas. This resulted in the development of new codifiable sonic indicators for tone and mood. Similar sonic markers of unfamiliarity are immediately present and under the skin, though they are drastic in their indication of alienness, augmenting the film's uncomfortable tone and making for an intensely alienating experience right from the start of the film. The first thing the audience can perceive are dark tremors with a penetratingly intense timbre. This metallic and resonant instrumentation quickly sets an uncanny mood, alerting the viewer that they are entering a domain of dense unfamiliarity. The profound integration of reverberating strings and muttered syllables here reflects older principles of sound in science fiction films to express mood, but Levi expands them in vastly uncanny ways due to the strangeness and pervasiveness of their composition's instrumentation, tone color, and rhythm. This path is only furthered when the audience finally accesses the human world. The way in which we are introduced to the cinematic world would be completely familiar in any other circumstance. The score, however, dictates an inherent strangeness in Glazer's depiction of everyday life through its instrumental and melodic unfamiliarity. Levi's music, when attached to these scenes, has the power to make our own world feel out of place, and we begin to view fellow humans from an outsider alien perspective similarly to the manner in which our non-human guide does. Thus, we in turn feel alienated from our own humanity. Levi's nuanced and intricate ability to evoke this deep and warped view of humanity is monumental, again, pushing the boundaries of what is experienced during a science fiction film by means of its score. For example, the Hawkenden note, combined with the zipping and panning past the various individuals on the street, is what Levi calls the idea of energy being moved around, not quite focusing, but connecting. Here, the score is like a continued thought, though it is a thought we are not privy to and will largely not be able to holistically access throughout the rest of this film, again, generating and enhancing discomfort in radically intentional ways. In understanding the film's examination of humanity, the viewer must also turn to the analysis of the very non-human main character, who is named Laura but is never addressed. Key to this conversation is that the score is what primarily expresses Laura's extraordinary characterization and psychology. For example, the aforementioned cloud-like string tremolos and spacious sounds follow her throughout her journey among the humans, which alludes to her non-human physiological ties to the cosmos and the otherworldly. Laura also moves to the sound of what Levi calls a seductive snake charmer ish melody that symbolizes a perfume that Laura uses to entrance her victims. The strings used in this melody are almost culturally codifiable. They feel melodically like a snake charm tune common in popular media, and yet 
The theme lies just out of human reach, reinforcing both the scores pushing a classic science fiction musical boundaries and the viewer's inherent questioning of the definition of humanity. This indeterminate sentiment was purposefully crafted as Levi inspected their instrumentation as to allocate and diminish the human element in it by altering the pitch and dynamics to deliberately make it uncomfortable. Complementing these features is the hollow knock of a single drum, a plodding repeated theme that inescapably draws both the audience and the men into Laura's trance like a single dragging foot. Levi calls this percussion a musical representation of Laura as a predator. The sound of the void alone, which was recorded in an anechoic chamber, was purposely crafted by Burns in hopes of producing a sound unlike anything he had heard before. This desire culminated in the creation of a visual and auditory blackness that absorbs all interpretations and meanings we might project onto it, and its absorptive form indicates a metaphor that the human passing Laura understands, but the human viewer and victims cannot, further warping our perception concerning humanity in the film. This musical theme, the unplaceable and uncanny string melody set against the cold drumbeat, aids in constructing a contrast between the void's all-encompassing absorption and its pervasive ambiguity. It is again entrancing but difficult to identify combined with a soundscape that is intentionally void of noise, an effort in resisting the temptation to embellish by Burns intensifies the abnormalness of the dreamlike haze. Lastly, sound complicates our discernment of Laura and humanity in the drowning sequence, one of the more potent examples of Laura's abnormality. There's almost a moment in which we hope Laura might demonstrate a shred of empathy as we've absorbed the surrounding environment from her perspective thus far and have subconsciously correlated her alien inside to her exterior human form, and we want to believe that in an instance of such heightened tensity and tragedy she might exhibit human consciousness. Instead, that pervasive cloud of strings tells us that she is unmoved, challenging our human contextualization of her. Moments of unembellished diegetic sound are clearly intentional here as they highlight Laura's indifference towards the situation. Her unfeeling actions paired with only distressing strings and the slightly muted sound of the waves and wind demonstrate her alienness as she watches the ocean absorb the family similarly to how she absorbs her victims in the void. In the end, to blatantly answer any consequential questions about Under the Skin through the film score would be to destroy the uncomfortable tension that flourishes throughout the film. Instead, Levi's music wraps around every space in our mind and body in tune with the rhythm and melody of the scenes in the movie. It doesn't simply exist in the balance of the film, nor does it solely complement the eerie cinematography and mise-en-scene. It pushes both the pervasiveness and oddity of science fiction film to new heights and illuminates the supernatural questions and complexities of humanity through its uncoded nature, its worldly transportative properties, and its sheer uncanniness.